Morning, guys, and welcome to another session of D Lab on uh, P4P, Passion for Performance. And um, today we're talking to Mark van der Berg and um, also Darren van der Berg, almost the same surname there, except for the spelling. And the topic is exploring what makes assessment happen in the digital age. A very relevant topic. And I'm just going to quickly hand over to both of these gentlemen just to introduce themselves and maybe just give a little bit of their background before we start um, with some questions. Um, Darren, just over to you. Cool. Thanks, Gabriel. So, so my name is Darren and I'm the uh, founder, co-founder of Passion for Performance. Um, Passion for Performance is an electronic assessment moderation and portfolio platform. Mm. Um, and I've been playing in the learning L&D space predominantly for the past 20 odd years. Um, and in that I've come to learn that um, assessment is a, is a very interesting word and that people get trained to be assessors, but there's no real kind of focus around how to assess what, what to assess, where to assess. They literally just look at your tick box exercises. Um, and that then in my experience grew. So it's not just L&D or learning and development assessors, actually anything that requires you to observe anybody else's performance is assessment. So that would be recruitment, that would be performance management, that would be coaching, on-job coaching. So yeah, so in my experience and in the growth, um, you know, I've become a part of this digital legal assessment professionals um, so that we can start professionalizing this thing called assessment. Mm. It's me. Mark, maybe just a little bit of background on you. Thanks, Gabriel. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Mark. Live in Johannesburg, and I'm really am, am keen on the whole digital era. I was brought up with going to school in 2010. Facebook came up, and that's when I really started my journey in digital. Uh, this has helped me in my career. Uh, at the moment, I'm working at a studio called uh, Silverstone, which is in Randburg, and also I'm the founder of a company called Mobile Moment, uh, which is a very big focus on a company's first interaction online. And that's uh, probably the most important step for any company to be in. And I really enjoy contributing to a team and, and yeah, just instructing and learning from where companies want to go digitally. Every company has got a unique aspect mm. that needs to be seen online and it can be done in so many different ways. Sure. More relevant than ever, right? Eh? What you're doing. <laughs> sure. Um, let's jump into the first question. Um, Darren, if you want to take this one, why is digital assessment necessary and why should we consider it? So digital assessment is, is it's become kind of the requirement, I think. Um, in the past, a lot of assessment has taken place on paper. So what would happen is your supervisor or your manager or your learning development practitioner would go out with a piece of paper or a, a, an assessment guide or an observation checklist, tick book, and that flooded piece of paper, they tick, 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 and watch the person work. And then they'll go drop that paper off somewhere. They could, they'll drop it off in someone's admin office, on someone's desk, and that person will then have to capture the results into an Excel document or onto SAP or into one of these big programs. And then no one knows where to find the results. So you left with a very interesting scenario where potentially the assessments were getting done. People liked the idea of it, but because it was um, paper-based, you know, the, the person who captured, captured it wrong. The, um, the person who was being assessed had no access to see what the results were. And that's where it all started falling apart. And it's, and it's the same with, with in, in other spaces. So I, I wanna know if this person is the right person for the job. So there's a one-stop assessment that takes place because they can't really review any previous um, demonstration of skill. And so what happens is you don't really know what happened, what, what's going on as the learner, as the assessor, you're just doing a job. And so it's a, it's a cyclical or cycle review. It needs to go digital because we now have the tools. It's the same as, um, you know, Uber or Airbnb. They're only able to do what they are because of the internet and the tools that are available. So, did assessment needs to go digital it needs to go to a place where there's immediate feedback provided to the assessor and the person being assessed mm. on what's going on it gives the assessor the opportunity to see a combination of results over a long period of time in that 
if I'm just assessing one person, I can see how well I'm doing with that person. If I'm assessing a team of people, I can also see a combined rating on the team and get a feel for how well my assessment is doing. But on top of that, my team or the person can also see how they are doing over a period of time. And we start getting into a increased productivity because when I get assessed, I get to see my gap real time. So what am I not doing right now, as opposed to I'll see you in six months at a performance review and what did I not do right six months ago? So for me, this is the real need that assessment needs to go digital. And you know, with this whole lockdown scenario, I'd like to talk a little bit about mm. that because the lockdown has now put people into a position where we're going, um, before lockdown, I know people are doing their jobs, jobs are right, it's all good. Now we're in lockdown, people are going, well, are you really doing a job and are you doing all of your job? And is all your job still necessary? So as soon as the system can move, moves online, moves online well with the foundation, we, you will start reviewing job roles. Um, mm -hmm. So you're actually going to impact a far bigger business um, and help take companies into the, the digital, uh, you know, the digital future. I think what I like about it as well is um, for the person being assessed, it actually clarifies as well, you know, what is the criteria, where we're we moving towards, what is being assessed. And I think at the moment uh, it's, it's relevant. I mean, people are sitting at home and I think the, um, you know, the employer needs to find a way of just, you've just said, you know, find a way of assessing whether the work's being done at a certain, certain level or in a certain direction. But the employee is also forced to think about, oh, word, how does it, how do I actually fit into this into this organization? Am I contributing the way I should, you know, and making the needed adjustments? Mark, do you want to add anything to to this? Yeah, I think what Darren touched on was this continual assessment, and it's something that starts as soon as I say I'm ready to do something. Uh, that's like your, your your mean line, your average line. Like, okay, I can do this. I know I can do it. I, I, the challenge of whatever I'm finding myself in, um, but it's keeping those records for something. Uh, we know that training records need to be kept for a long period of time. And the data that's coming out of those assessments is probably the most critical part. Um, the first question we should ask ourselves is, are we asking the right questions? Because mm. uh, questions can be very misleading. And in our society as general, we do already have issues with language. Uh, I've seen mm. it in my experience. Yeah. Where people are asked questions that are too technical, or we ask people for outcomes that are too technical. And obviously, depending on what kind of field you're in, it's, it's important to know that the levels of our society are there and it's, it's not to play anyone down or to um, like push or punch someone in the side. It's more to say, like, I've got this um, skill, I need to be tested on it, but I also need to be tested on the same average that I'm going to be fulfilling my job in you know mm. so i think definitely the, the biggest key is to keep that data and use the data specifically for an outcome sure mm. that's cool um next question uh what is the uptake of digital assessment from assessors sure. so in our experience in our experience as we've gone digital with assessors and, and learners you know, learners kind of from level two and up love the concept of trying to use their phones in the training room, taking photos of their evidence and their formatives. And our biggest pushback has come from the assessor. So, sure. And um, I, we probably found out of every hundred assessors who get brought on to the digital space in the ETV space at least, probably only 15 to 20 are prepared to work through it and actually give good feedback. Most assessors are very comfortable with their books and their papers and you know because in in, in, the, in the etd world specifically and that's the world in which i play um the assessor's job is once you hand over the the, the files to the training provider my work is done mm -hmm. there's there's not a lot of requirement for the and picking up on mark said there's not a lot of requirement for the assessor to walk longevity with the with the learner to really help them with their gaps their job is to tick the book hand over bam and I think part of that is most assessors seldom get good feedback on how well they've assessed. And when they've given feedback to the training provider on how to do things differently, better, 
more efficiently, um, they don't they don't feel that they're being heard. So why am I doing all this work? I'm, I'm telling this person what's working, what's not working, what the learners are telling me, but no one's doing anything about it because everyone's just comfortable in their space and you know we're posting things from A to B and DHL didn't get there on time and the South African post office kind of closed down and so it becomes such a huge administration nightmare that people simply just switch off and they just tick the boxes. So, so we've had a fairly interesting pushback on it. But in saying that, the assessors who have really kind of got involved, they've given some incredible feedback. There's some really good insights coming out. You know, we're shifting reports. What they're getting is valuable to them. And we've even had some assessors, assessors go back to the learners after training, like a month or two or three months, just to follow up and see how they're doing. Totally out of expectation, not a requirement. So that's kind of the experience that I'm having in the learning and development space um, around this uptake for digital assessment. There's a huge fear around it, and even bigger of what if I get it wrong? Now, right now, if they get it wrong, <laughs> the chances of catching them get it, of getting it wrong is, is quite slim because only if the learner goes and kills someone or burns a house down do they go back and see mm. what the assessor did. You know, so it kind of moves its way, moves its way through quite quickly. Mm. Whereas digital, you know, you you're being looked at, and you know, Big Brother is watching, so, mm. so to speak. So, so there is a required maturity in the business and in the training provider space to encourage and work with the assessors rather than crap on them if they get something not entirely correct. So a, it? That's so, my perspective on that. So it's a mindset change, Darren concerning 100%. It's, 100%. it's not the technology it's the it's the mindset concerning and the thinking concerning it so what is the, i mean f from your experience up to now what are the things that that change that mindset would you say immediate feedback the fact that the assessor can immediately be told this is great this you know this didn't make sense um and i want to go back to what mark was saying as well there's this sort of, the the biggest the biggest shift and change the biggest change that will shift the mindset is for a training to provider to relook at their assessment strategy or for a business a performance management talent director to relook at the assessment strategy or for a recruitment agent to relook at the assessment strategy not the business how we encourage and how we do assessment because someone will go on a piece of paper for an observation it'll be the the the, 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 the um you know the assessment point will be the learner must describe how to sweep a floor. But if I'm watching you sweep a floor, there's no description there. Mm -hmm. There's no tell me. It's the learner must sweep the floor with the following criteria. So the assessment criteria needs to change. Now, when you're shifting the assessors into a digital space, they're already a little bit nervous. Mm -hmm. And now when the assessment criteria is ambiguous like that, you know, I, I should be asking the person this question. I shouldn't be observing. And psychologically, it throws them out. And then, like Mark, like Mark, Mark was saying, when the language differs, and we have 11 official languages, the, 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 the assessor is trying to convert that English language into their language to understand it, to know what to look for. And it's a big mess. That, for me, is where it falls down. It, it is a big onus on training providers to review the assessment strategies. That way, digital assessment will far quicker be taken up, I believe. Yeah. Sure. Okay. The next question is to Mark, and this, it kind of follows on on what we've just been talking about. And the question is, what will we? What will be the number one reason why digital assessment will not be successful? It kind of touches touch on what we just spoke about. Maybe just want to, from your point of view, just elaborate a little bit on that topic. Yeah. Thanks. I think the biggest thing is buy-in and strategies that allow us to do that are all around workshops. How do we involve the assessors? How do we involve the people being assessed in the process? Because the process of paper or our original assessments have been going around along for so much time that it's become ingrained in our, let's call it theology of answering or questioning. Uh, so I think it would all begin with workshopping. Right? So the uptake issues that we have or the buy-in issues all around people being forced into doing something in a new way. Um, and like Darren said earlier, the lockdown has definitely speeded mm. up our digital uptake. 
Um, a lot of people are updating their websites now. Big companies are going digital. Um, companies are trying on e-commerce for the first time in their lives. Mm. And this is exactly the same thing as within our assessment criteria. So our, our biggest failure could, or let's call it a challenge, because everyone loves this idea of I'm, uh, I, we're all in the same boat, and I'm challenged to stay afloat in this boat that everyone's in. And how do I uh, take that challenge? Is I, I go in and I look at what's working somewhere else and apply that to my own uh, strategies. Mm. So I think for, for me, it's definitely around how we communicate with each other and how we uh, allow buy-in because it's an allowed thing. And it's a, it's a motivational thing where people are brought into a room and said, okay, how can we be better at what we do? How do we change the way that we do it? How do we improve on our automation? Because uh, uh, maybe there are a few questions in our assessments that are not needed anymore. Uh, and that's what digital also allows us to do is, is we can obfuscate stuff that's irrelevant. Mm. And doing that lets us focus on the important bits. Imagine these checklists or uh, criterial questions that are hundreds of questions long. They could actually be brought down to 20 or 30. Assessments could take it on a different form. Um, and I think playing it forward is important. Uh, there's a term in digital, like I fail forward. And that's because I'm going to fail trying out something new. And um, failing together is better than me as an assessor and an assessee having the relationship of um, a dictator. You don't want to see that in assessment because I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Yeah, I think on that note as well, is I think it's when the when the person that's being assessed realized the value of that assessment, the fact that the data is available immediately, and if it you know if the data it's a it's a self development tool instead of it just being I'm um, being put underneath this uh, uh, under the spotlight, <laughs> and there's going to be a re certain requirement. Um, I think then it becomes I think uh, and the whole on, on slightly different topic on the on the digital it being digital as well as highlighting the benefits i mean the data is immediate immediately available right which normally would not be mm. the case mm. and it's mm. on a certain timeline so, so you sorry, can go, go so you can go back to it sorry, just, yeah, yeah sorry um but just picking up on that you know so we work with the seaters in south africa mm. and you know we've there's a process that takes place. It's about mm. eight months for the process to take place for learners to get certified. You know, we've managed to get it down to 14 days sure. because of the you know digital. We've stayed within governance. Every box has been ticked. Everything has been you know done properly. And that was pre yeah. the the awakening to digital. That was sure. the seat of taking a risk. Um, you know, our learners were in Port Elizabeth. The assessor was in Port Elizabeth. The moderator was in in Pretoria. The verifier was in Durban. <laughs> So, so that means, I mean, we're talking about hundreds of kilometers distance and right now, what normally takes eight months with people who just live in one region across three regions took 14 days mm. and everyone was involved. The learners, going back to Mark's point, the learners, the assessors, the moderators, everyone was giving feedback. This didn't work. That worked. Can we change this? This assessment criteria makes no sense. Why is it even here? We don't do this in our business. And actually the company we were doing it with, their learners, their group of learners, actually got together without being asked and redesigned the opening checklists of the business. So this is what was expected of them every day. No one had ever used the checklist in like 10 years because there was no value. But when they got assessed in it, they saw there's no, oh no, they got together afterward and redesigned that to make sense to the current business without HR getting involved and no whip cracking and, you know, this is your KP. No, 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 they did it because they could see the benefit to their workspace. That's part of this insane value. Sure. Agreed. That's, um, yeah, that's incredible. It's a completely different mind space, eh? Mm -hmm. um, next question, Darren, um, in your experience, what is the, in this, the, is this ingredient that caused the shift to digital assessment to be successful? kind of follows Sorry, on gabriel you broke up would you ask it again sorry um in your experience what is the ingredient that caused the shift to digital assessment to be successful the key ingredients would mm. be um so so the, there was two one that the technology worked <laughs> so 
you know, you can't always expect technology to work and you can't always expect it to work the right way because we're all learning and technology, even though it's gaining momentum, it's still pretty new. So, so the key ingredient is under promise and over deliver. So, so do not promise to the end user what your technology cannot currently do. Mm. Don't worry about what you're working on. Don't worry what, about what's in beta testing. What does it currently do right now? That's the first thing. The second thing is if you're not embarrassed by what you send live, then what you've sent live is too late. <laughs> so don't worry about pretty look and feels and great front ends. And that's important. Yeah, don't get me wrong, it is important. But rather get the system live as quick as you can and people using it. Because then the more that they use it, the more bugs come up, the more problems arise. You know, and from there, you can fix before you go scale. So that for me would be probably one of the key ingredients is to have a simple, effective plan. I mean, one of my learning curves is I've had to really learn how to focus on one thing. Um, you, know, you know, I can do anything. YouTube and Google enables people to do anything. Hmm. But you've got to become really pinpoint focused on what is it that you do, become really good at that, and then make sure you go live in small iterations and promise what works. I think that for me is the, is the key is a key to this. Mark, is there anything you want to add on this topic? What would you say? What is what is an ingredient that um, that that helps to shift? Yeah, I totally agree with Darren. Like the ease of use is important. You don't want to have learners stumbling through a process, uh, especially in self assessment, because then you're doing it by your own, by yourself. Sorry, and if you don't have someone there to assist you and something goes wrong, it's just like a lost cause. You're not gonna to touch it again. Um, another ingredient I, I have found specifically uh, in the space I've played in is leveraging IoT and leveraging more devices uh, and really connecting with things uh, that's gonna assist me in my, uh, my assessment. Now we're talking maybe more about assessing uh, physical objects than people. Um, but if we, if we think about it, we could use hard rate monitors and watches we, we could really spice things up uh, when the technology kind of is, is useful for the assessment that i'm doing uh, that's really quite helpful and just on my last point i think the idea of me learning something new in an assessment uh, is really critical because i've seen in, in the practices of checklists becoming risk assessments that people who are so used to just ticking boxes or saying yes and no are not applicable can actually do a full on risk assessment and they don't even know they're doing it. And, and this is based on me just asking and getting a template ready for the people who work with me uh, and asking them to a uh, risk assessor kind of level where they were just previously, let's say a, a, an inspection kind of person where that was their main uh, goal to do inspections. Uh, so yeah, I think you know, make it easy to use leverage technologies that I'm comfortable with and I want to try out because there's a gamification in there and I get mm. the thrills and then definitely uh, the idea of me learning something new. And I, th I think just to add to that, I think one of the main ingredients at the moment is the fact that we don't have much of a choice. <laughs> we have to, we have to shift gears. Um, the old way of doing things, I think it was to some degree a luxury that we had and now it's, kind of not anymore and it's uh, I mean if we see the way the world's going at the moment and now it's going to go for the rest of the year I mean it's just going to be difficult to get groups together and do assessment that way uh, I think the fact that that option was there and available and working somehow to some degree was maybe one of the stumbling blocks um, yeah but keeping the control probably the most important thing. So like okay. in our discussion today where we we're using a platform like zoom so mm. how do i know that my privacy isn't being yeah. taken advantage of absolutely um, how do i know that i've seen so many zoom fails where uh, in classrooms someone's leaked the password and you get all these random people joining mm. and they're not even supposed to be in there like, yeah there's ways and means to stop absolutely. that kind of stuff happening. yeah um, and it's just uh, the thing of upskilling is we don't only upskill the assessee you have skilling the assessor. Like, yeah. How can I use the tool better? Yeah. Like, so that, that workshop where we talked about how do I make an assessment? Mm. I think it's, it's critical to know that how do I 
leverage the tools to their best of capability. This mm. is what the platform can do. Yeah. Sure. That's awesome. Um, where would digital assessment be most effective? Sure. Gabo, for the next, for the rest of this year, at least, you know, mm. as we come out of this lockdown, as we, um, you know, as we grow, um, I think if you're trying to look three years ahead, you kind of going to be wasting your time mm. because of the, what Mark spoke about the internet of things, the connecting of all digital devices. Um, it's happening so quickly that if you're looking too far ahead, you, you, you're, you're going to kill yourself. Um, for me, it, um, running the company you know, that I run, the next six or seven months is should be, in our case, it's a review of what is that you're currently doing. So physically, take a time, almost a time and motion study. Map your day. You woke up at eight. You sat down. You got up, went for a coffee. You got up for a second coffee at nine, a third coffee. That kind of stuff. Without the fear of being you know, you know, crapped on and start to just reevaluate what it is you're doing for your company. So getting the teams of people, you know, together going, you know, where, where are the finance team? What is it that we're physically doing right now? Who invoiced today? Who credit noted? Because, you know, until those processes are reviewed and what you will do is you'll start reviewing your actual job process. Um, in the reviewing of the process, what you're doing, I'll give you a prime example. Facilitators are no longer going to a classroom, standing up and training. Yeah. They are now training on Zoom, like, mm -hmm. like Mark is talking about. Mm -hmm. And of course, the question that you pose is, is your um, training material so important that no one else can see it? Mm -hmm. Or maybe now's the time to let your training department become profit generating and, and let give the password out on online. You know, and, and let anyone join your great and mighty empire of training because sales is sales. And whether you sell for one company or another, you know, you have the best sales course in the world. That's why you train a company. Offer it out to the market. Shift the mindset on around, around what needs to be assessed. Because I think Giselle spoke last week. If it's not, if you're not assessing it, it won't get done. Mm. Therefore, if it's not done, or if, if it doesn't need to be done, and you don't need to assess it take it out and simplify what, what you're doing. And I think that's kind of what needs, I think that's where the, that's where the shift needs to happen now. I'm not talking about, you know, hire massive, you know, corporate um, um, companies to come in and do, you know, business reviews and restructure. It's a bit big. I think right now in small teams, we can just review what our department does, how we do it, what's being assessed, plug it together and then test it and see how it works. Yeah. Mark? And don't you think it comes back to what is in that specific assessment? Because so we're good, not talking about digital uh, in terms of digitalization versus digitization, because digitization would mean the outcome of that report. Every single answer is kept. Every single stream is kept. How long the assessment took is, is kept. And that's quite critical because uh, you could go through like just clicking next, 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 if you're, if you're done. Like a, that is not a, a way to do a checklist, you know, and yeah. the power that you're now giving to the CEOs and the HR specialists within the companies is that they've got analytics of data that they never got. They used to wait for donkey's years to wait yeah. for Excel to be put into, or PDFs to be put into Excel or extrapolating that analytics out of there. It just didn't make sense. So good, Mark. So good. Um, do you uh, do you want to talk talk maybe just we've got five minutes left not a lot um do you maybe just want to talk about the cost elements i think that's i mean moving digital is great um but obviously there's the benefit you know of of creating a platform and maybe just give us a little bit darren i know we've spoken about this once or twice um is it maybe something you want to just touch on we've got five minutes left so you can't <laughs> go too elaborate on this topic um yeah but i mean what's the this is obviously new territory but what's the what's the cost implication so gabriel i think in answering that question um there is another consideration needs to take place so you know to go digital at the moment it's how long is a piece of string because everyone is trying to figure out the pricing in the market mm. there's a lot of new so when um, um e-commerce went online how much did that cost? So people started throwing numbers around, trying to figure out what, what the market 
um, what the market um, absorption rate is. But you know, when we, we uh, the cost has to be a, a, a trade off against something else. So in mm. the learning and development space, as an example, a learner builds a portfolio of evidence, which is usually about eighty to one hundred, maybe two hundred pages per portfolio. That by law has to be kept for five years in a in a room, a storage mm. room. So if you are a provider that's doing you know fifty learners a year, you're talking about a room maybe a two by two room in your office that you are paying rent for that's collecting mm. a whole bunch of paper that's not necessary so first of all you're paying rent on a two by two room then it's a fire hazard because it's paper so what are you paying for insurance then and, and you keep going and when you start adding up those costs mm. um you know a courier has got to courier the document from cape town to joburg and then if something's wrong it's got to go back to cape town then you've got to get it to the assessor so if if you actually map out the real cost of what's going on in your in, in your current process and then you look at the investment that's required on the digital space you know expensive is relative you know you, yeah. a company puts in a big a big thing and says oh a million rand's expensive but if your current costs are 20 million then a million rand is not so expensive mm. and, and you know so in order to go digital be careful yes some people are mocking it and really kind of making a you know an obscene amount of money unnecessarily perhaps um again if you don't know the market it's a bit of a difficult scenario to say that but try not go oh it's it's a piece of it's zoom it costs this much no zoom is a platform that you are using and now you no longer need to hire a classroom or buy food and snacks yeah. or pay for the travel of the facilitator all the accommodation or so all this cost you're saving on needs to be the first part of before it costs to go digital hmm. um and if you have that in mind then it's a real real way up um you know also you've got to consider going digital what is the cost of training up the assessors training up the moderators training up the ccs what's that cost something else you got to consider as well and do a proper costing analysis because expensive is relative yeah um and every company will see or every person in every company will see expensive as uh, you know we'll see we'll see anything digital expensive every most cfos go oh we don't need it just keep doing what we're doing cut costs but not digitally and it's and if you approach a cfo and go oh i've got a new idea most times they're going is it going to cut costs mm. if you can't answer that yeah you know so be it mark what do you think We've got two minutes Plus, left. I Bob. think also of, of, of risk. So if I am now putting all my effort into moderating using a, a platform or using something that I don't have uh, the know-how of, of getting my data, that's also a very big cost estimate. Like mm -hmm. if you think about a platform going down, uh, I'm not going to be able to do my reporting anymore. I can't do an assessment. So I think it's critical to know that you're even on South African soil with your data. Uh, that's a, a very big thing to to think about. Yeah. Awesome, guys. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but thank you very much, um, yeah, for spending the few minutes with us and giving your insights. And um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave it underneath, and um, Darren or Mark will get back to you. Thank you very much, Kipal. Yeah, thank you so much. Cheers, Cheers. Thanks. Kipal. Bye. Thanks, Mark.